Hello, in this video we will take a look at the graph node workflow inside Gaia. The graph node is the recommended workflow for creating sophisticated terrains as well as creating virtually anything. It's the workflow that I recommend and it works uh, just like in other softwares like Substance Designer where you place nodes uh, in uh, a chain to create uh, your terrain. A node is just uh, a function that do something. For example, when you open your uh, scene, every time you open your scene you have this example here, a little mountain, and uh, here we can see that uh, we have three different nodes. Each one of them do a um, different function. For example, the, the chain goes from left to right. Right is the last one. And uh, in this case, the mountain is the first one. So this mountain here is a node and uh, it creates this mountain. Then we have a displace that uh, simply add some displacement and uh, randomness to the terrain. And finally, we have erosion that serves, as the name implies, to erode the terrain. So as you can see, every node has its own function. And they are all collected here on the left. There is uh, the toolbox that is a list of all the nodes available to you. They are uh, categorized. We have primitives, adjustments, filters, erosion, data maps, selectors color, output, and finally utilities. You can also access them by right clicking anywhere uh, on, the, on the graph here. As you can see, I right click and you have the same categories. The primitives are the one you start with. So let's delete everything. Simply left click, select all of them and press uh, delete. Okay, so let's say that we want to create something. Right click to bring up your list of nodes and uh, you always start with a primitive. A primitive is just a base shape to start with. We have many different uh, shapes and terrains here. For example, we have the dunes, for maybe a desert, we have the mountain, and so on. So let's uh, stay simple and uh, create a mountain by simply left clicking on it. And uh, then I can uh, left click and hold on the node to move it where I want it. Then I zoom in with the mouse scroll wheel. And here we have our mountain. Every node has its own parameters that you can see on the right uh, panel here. In the case of a mountain primitive, we have a scale. As you can see, if I left click on the bar here, I can change the value. I can also right click on the bar and uh, I have uh, arrows to a more precision uh, value changes or I can also write it by left clicking on the number and simply write the value that I want like 20. If I want to reset everything I simply right click and uh, I click on reset there is the square uh, on the center. Then we have other parameters uh, every I want to go, uh, I want to explain every parameter because uh, uh, it will it will be boring. So just experiment with them. They are very intuitive, and uh, every node also has uh, its own input and output. In the case of this mountain, we have for the input the mask because it, it can be used for masking. And we also have a general output 
This is very simple, it only has one input and one output, but let's say that I place another node and uh, as mentioned before, you always start with primitives. However, after that, it's up to you, really. We have uh, adjustors. Adjustors are uh, very similar to the Photoshop filters. They are used to fix the terrains. Maybe if you have a very sharp peak uh, with artifacts, you can uh, place, uh, let's say, a clamp uh, to reduce the height or maybe an uh, heel. Then we have filters. Again, they are uh, similar to adjustors, but they are used to actually modify the terrain, not to fix artifacts. In fact, we have, for example, terrace or wall to add uh, like curves to curve the terrains and so on. Then we have eroders to erode the terrains to give it a realistic look. And then uh, we have selectors that are used for masking. Data maps and colors are for texturing. I won't explain them here. And finally, we have the output that I will explain them when uh, we export our terrains at the end of the series. So let's say that I want, uh, I want to curve the terrain to give it a surreal look. I go to the filters, place a swirl. And by default, uh, Gaia won't connect your nodes uh, with each other. You must connect them. So they go from left to right. So you take the output to your mountain and place it in the input of a new node. And here we have uh, the effect going on. Let's uh, bump the resolution a little bit to 1K. Okay. And let's say, let's change some parameters. Okay, very simple. And as you can see, this node, this wheel, has more inputs. It has the normal input, but also the mask. Now let's take an erosion to show you the, all the, all the inputs and outputs. So this erosion has more or less the same inputs of the wheel, but it also has this area that I practically never use. But for the outputs, it has tons of them. Now, what you usually use is the normal output. But if, for example, you want to export your terrain inside a game engine, maybe you need some specific maps, you can also export the where, deposit and flow. So that's good to know. And that's why it has so many outputs. Some nodes has also presets. For example, the erosion, if you click on it and go to the parameters on the right, there is this icon with three bars, uh, with three rectangles. Click on them and uh, here we have presets. These are uh, presets made by the guys at, Ga at uh, Quad Spinner and uh, they can speed up your workflow. For example, if you have maybe, if you want to create a Mesa, you can use the Mesa presets. Of course, you must have uh, terraces before or something like that. But as you can see, all the parameters has changed. So this can be useful for speeding up uh, the creation process. There are also other ways to connect nodes together. So the first way is to simply take the nodes from the list, as mentioned before, and drag it to the graph. This is the most simple way. The second way is what I use. Simply right click anywhere and choose the nodes you want, like for example, Perlin. The third way is to left click and hold on the output, then release the mouse button in a blank area. And here the list will pop up and you can choose the nodes that you want. For example, erosion again. These are the ways to connect nodes together. Another cool feature of nodes is that you can mutate them. That means you can change the, all the parameters to create another uh, uh, random terrains. 
We have here on the bottom left, on the bottom right, the mutate nodes icon. If you have only one node selected, for example, I select my wheel and I click mutate nodes. This will change only the wheel. Now this is a little bit difficult to see, so let's take the mountain. Let's do it again. As you can see, it changed. However, if I if I don't have any nodes selected, I can click on mutate nodes, and it will mutate every node in the scene. Now this is my mountain. This is my wheel, and this is the erosion. I don't usually use that because. Uh, I prefer to make them the way I want, but it's good to know that you have this possibility. You can always connect nodes between each other. Let's make some space. Let's say that I want to place a displace nodes to randomize this terrain a little bit between this mountain and this wheel. I can simply take out my displace node. Then I connect the output of the mountain to my input of the displace. And uh, then the output of the displace to the input of the sphere. And I place it. Okay. As you can see, it's very easy. And to cut a connection, you can simply select the connection and press delete. Okay, I believe that this covers everything you need to know about the graph node workflow. As I said before, for the parameters of each node, it's better to experiment with them, see what they, what they do, because that's the best way to learn. Also, maybe take a look at the Gaia documentation. It's not completed yet, but uh, the most common nodes uh, are explained there. And to know which nodes go first and uh, who goes uh, after, well, the, the first node is always a primitive node, as I said in the beginning, because that's what gives you the main terrains to work with. However, you can also combine uh, multiple shapes uh, together. Like, for example, here I have, I have a mountain, maybe I, I want the dunes and I take a combine just to show you. Okay. And yes, you can combine multiple shapes together like I did here. So the first one is always a primitives. And then uh, you can uh, place whatever you want. The adjustors are usually for fixing stuff uh, aside from uh, some uh, nodes like the combine that I used to mix the two primitives together. So you usually don't use them so often. The filters and the, the eroders are the most important ones by far. Colors and data maps are for texturing. Output is just for exporting. And the selectors are for masking. So with that said, it's just a matter of starting with a primitive and then place uh, filters, eroders and some adjusters if needed to create your uh, terrain. Okay, so in the next video, we will take a look at the layer based workflow. And uh, after that, we'll start diving uh, deeper into the real terrain creation and start creating uh, our very first terrain. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment if you have any questions, subscribe to stay up to date with the latest videos and I'll see you in the next one. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand.
into the fire But it's no use Cause you can't stop it from shining through It's true 